Why you describing is a belief and is held in Buddhism? Do you listen? Do you read Buddhism? So I know. So you're describing a world view. So so that is also a world view. But I'm looking for the truth. And Which that one? Is a Buddhist view of what I believe. But I was raised in Christianity. But I have found my own path, and that's why I want to say, what what do you bring to this that you can say to me? I have reality over belief. Yeah, that's that's the the point for me. Like it's not that I pick and choose what I like. So I've not looked into Buddhism, for example, as the one example in Christianity, Judaism, Islam, Sikhism. I did not look into those, those religions to choose what fits my desires and what I like and then I follow it. Because it's not about what I like, it's about what is truly from God, right? If God exists and it is the truth, then God sends commands but and... God exists. Yeah, there I believe that. God. That's what I believe. There I'm saying. a greater being. Yes, yes. God that we exists. agree there. We agree. <laughs> we agree, right? So if there is a creator, one okay. entity that created the world, I'm saying that that entity will send a teaching. That teaching cannot be all of these those different religions. Okay, we agree on that. Yeah, so 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 if for example if Islam is true then nothing else is true. If Christianity is true then nothing else is true. So the reality is that we need to try to see the reasons, the evidences for why a specific religion is true and another religion is not true. But what, what I say is taking the standpoint that if don't you believe that any religion as God is piece of truth? And if you see the all religions together no, you can understand. No, that's a, that's a belief that you'll find <laughs> in certain I mean but because yeah. there are many different ways in, in understanding God. But they're contradictory. They cannot be different views of God. Well, when, but there are different parts. No, no, they're contradictory. They to the same truth. No, 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 they are contradictory. Like, for example, you cannot say that God is uh, an animal like a cow and at the same time you say that God is not nothing like the creation. These are two contradictory statements. Both of them cannot be reconciled. But because you're, you're mentioning Hinduism belief in the cow. I'm mentioning certain examples in certain way, religions. The, the, cow, the, cow, the cow is a manifestation. It's not really God, but but still. No, it's not God. It's people. Uh, so basically when one of your siblings die or a person die, it yes. gets reincarnated in a cow. No, no, no. It's so not, they, they don't. there are historical reasons no, 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 no. They, they say something else. They say, there's something called pantheism, which is that everything is God. God is everything, so it includes it includes it includes the cow. It includes no. That's pantheism is a part of Hinduism. Oh, okay, so, so okay, I see. I see. It is. It is. But what I'm saying, the, the difference is Muslims believe Allah is separate from the world. So these are contradictory beliefs. I cannot believe that God is everything. At the same time, I believe that God is separate from the world. I would highly disagree. Like I wouldn't say God is under my shoes right now. That's not something that befits the majesty of God. I'm not going to say God is in the toilet, right? For me, God is a holy being. He's not everywhere. God is not in the rapist when he's raping. So God is raping. And the person being raped is God. Do you see the problems with this idea, concept of saying that everything is God? If I create something... But then that's an elitist manifestation of what you want the creator of God to be. It's not about what I want, remember? It's about what God is. For example, look. Do you believe God created the universe? I don't know. I, okay. I, 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 does the universe... There's a, lot, there's a real balance between God and science, so I... No, I'm not contradicting the two. Science says the universe has a beginning. So, if I science says... I believe in a God, but I don't know what that all being is. Yeah. Because I also believe that so much of what we perceive to be reality is a manifestation of the belief that we want to create as reality. Yes, as I said to you, there is a sub... Do you, I think I disagree you with that. are mm. a physical being... Okay. I, I am a physical I being as reality though. I don't know because <laughs> Why am I then? Because if you think of science as matter, yes. there is movement in water. Water is not a physical entity. But it is a physical, a physical entity. H2O, hydrogen moves, and oxygen. But it, but it moves with 
with waves and sound and sonic ability that, that water can move in relation to feeling. And if that can create a different movement, okay. then are we physical beings in the way that we feel it? Maybe not. Are we living in a virtual headset that we are sent here? Again, to uh, do, who do you, do you listen to Sam Harris? Who do you listen to, Sam Harris? No, I don't. Who do you, who do you, who do you listen to? No, no, but these are these are the Buddhist Buddhist belief, right? I know. So, so you, yeah, yeah, but but you are saying them as reality, and you need to establish but that I they're don't true. See it as reality. It's just a perception of. I don't know, and and I wouldn't profess to pretend to know. But Ex but how do you know? Is the question. But I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. I, and that's why I'm I, learning. And I get I'm opening it. to speak to you. Abs absolutely, that's true. But I'm saying to you, there is ways to know. I'm not saying you know or you don't know. I'm saying there is a you way. You don't know, and I don't know. No, no, but now you're imposing your kind of knowledge or lack of knowledge upon me, but you don't know me and you don't know what I know, right? Is it possible that I do know what the truth is? You have the belief you do. No, no, not belief. Is it possible that I know what the truth is? Maybe you do. I'll be okay. open enough so, to So you wouldn't tell me that? You're very lucky <laughs> if you know what the truth yeah, is. Yeah, I agree. So, no. I think that we are, I'm here to share that truth with everyone else. I don't, we don't believe that it's something that I should have that no one else should have. That's why Allah teaches That's us in the Quran. That's why you're sharing exactly. Okay. So I know. I will be open enough to say you know and okay. I will give you one minute okay. to tell me what your empowerment is that yes. you feel you should share with me. Okay, look. Okay, no problem. But I'll say this, I'll try to say this as simple as possible, right? We believe in different prophets and messengers of God. In the past, we believe in Jesus, Moses, Noah, Abraham. We believe in all of those prophets and messengers of God. When you look at the universe, there has to be by necessity something that is powerful, knowledgeable, eternal, that brought it into existence. You cannot create the universe without those attributes. So God must exist. The universe must have a starting point, And the creator must possess the, these attributes by definition. Just like the maker of this table. Okay, okay, okay. So I'm saying whoever created the table needed these attributes by necessity okay. or he would not be able to create the table. Okay. When I look at the universe, I apply the same reasoning and rationality. Yeah. The universe has displays these laws, this power, this intelligence, yeah. knowledge. So I would apply the same thing to say there has to be something very powerful, very intelligent, beyond our comprehension as human beings that brought the universe into existence, right? And then he's guided everything within creation. This tree gives me oxygen, takes my carbon dioxide. This ozone sphere is 0 0.004 carbon dioxide, right? Even the ants, they have colonies and prisons and Queen okay. system, right? And yeah. armies, right? So okay. everything is guided. Yeah. And we would say as human beings, we're not the odd one out. And we've seen repeatedly, God sends us different people that they all claim the same thing. They claim to be messengers of God. Coming to you with a message, asking you to worship the Creator, yeah. come close to God, and to obey Him. And they tell you the right and wrong in what happens in, on a day-to-day on -day basis, right? Okay. So Islam is that message. When you create something, you give a manual of how to deal with that thing. Quran is that. It's the guidance manual for human beings. Of how how they can interact with others, what they need to do and what they need to avoid, etc. Right? And it tells them about themselves and God so they don't get confused. Okay. So when they're reading all of those different concepts that you're quoting from different people, they wouldn't get confused because God has guided them through reading the Quran. You get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. And then those prophets and messengers bring evidences. Prophet Muhammad brought evidences. I believe or I know Islam is the truth based on evidences. Not based on my opinion. Like for example, 1,400 years ago, Prophet Muhammad spoke about the future that is happening today. Everything he said happened. He didn't say anything that didn't happen. And he would not know the future 1,400 years before. Especially how civilization and society was. When you read the Quran, it talks about life. It talks about mountains, how they have deep roots within the earth. It talks about embryology. How the baby in the womb develops a stage by stage. A professor called Keith Moore, who's a Christian, he said this has to be from God because I'm looking now with a microscope and the Quran is saying exactly what I'm seeing with my eyes. But they didn't have microscopes that time, right? The prophet spoke about how Arabs will build the tallest buildings and we have the tallest building in the world today, Burj Khalifa. And he said that the earth will puke its treasures and they were able to do it because the earth puked, puked the treasures, the oil. Right? Prophet Muhammad said the nations that would become Muslim, he named them one by one. I'm going to go on a real tangent only because we have like one more minute. Okay. And I just, because I feel I want to have an open mind. Okay. And yes. I see my husband and I as, as equal status. Yes. Yeah. We, okay. we both bring things to the party okay. with four children. Okay. And we have our own strengths and weaknesses. On a day to day basis, sometimes he has to drive the car, sometimes I have to drive the car, sometimes he has to power me up, sometimes I have to power him up. Okay. But if we go to Saudi Arabia, I feel personally my human rights are stripped because I can't get in a car. Can I, can I stop you there? Where do you get human rights from? 
Where define we... human rights. Defining human rights is survival. Are you quoting what the UN, which a group of Western no, 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 nations, no. determine what to be moral and immoral? No, I would define human rights as no, an access of passage that makes me feel empowered as a person to seek existence in the life that I believe I'm entitled to live. No, no, but you, you were saying in Saudi Arabia, Yeah. You would see that your your uh, human rights are stripped away. Can you can you tell me which article? For example, driving to get from A to B. Women drive in Saudi Arabia today. They do today. Yeah. What do you know? How many countries are Muslims? Many, tens of countries. None of the countries was stopping women from driving except Saudi Arabia for a very small period of time, which shows that has nothing to do with the teachings of Islam. Oh, yeah. Because I'm other, not, I'm not correlating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I no. Other religions, other religions would be. Oh, sorry, other countries would all to be doing the same thing if it was an Islamic teaching. So that's a common media mist- they, they, they try to use. But as I said to you, even that was for a few small period of years and they stopped it today. So, and, and I would so what other human rights? Ig- I would plead ignorance in this because yes. I, I don't know this. Okay. But for example, like women head. wearing a burqa, yeah, that, I don't know if that's a teaching of Islam or if that's a definition of like the country and the systemic regulation. Burqa or hijab because it's two different okay. things. One is a head covering yeah, hijab. and one can be the face covering so the face covering is is there's a disagreement that is, is uh, obligatory or not so a lot of women don't have to wear it they don't have to wear it I was told and I don't know if this is actually true because I have to ask somebody who knows it better than I do that it's the prevention of the temptation for the male population that it's it's the kind of sacred covering that that is kept within the household no okay, so the hijab that. is a command of God And the women wear it because God commanded them to do it, and they believe in God, and they believe. Sorry. To me, that's inequality. We are different. We're not equal. Women and men are not equal. Women and men are different, biologically, psychologically, in every way, shape, or form. We're not saying one is less than the other. We're saying they're different. They're not the same. Yeah. So to ask God to give the same commands to, to both genders does not make any rational sense. We don't believe in equality. We believe in equity. Equity is justice. If you had four children and he had three, and I gave both of you 300 pounds, that's not just. It's equal, but it's not just. When I see you have more children, so I'll give you extra money because you need more money, that is equity, and that's what Islam teaches. So Islam looks at the nature of a woman, and based on her nature, Allah is the most knowing, the most wise. He knows what befits her as commands. So why do I wear a burqa when you don't? Because I'm not a woman. And what men are attracted to in women is not the same things that women are attracted to to men. We are different. So you are assuming that we are attracted to the same things as, as human beings. We're not. Men and women are very different in their attraction. There's so many studies on that, right? So women can be attracted to certain things. Men are very visual and physical in their attraction. They're very simple, right? Something beautiful, that's it. <laughs> Story's over. He's, he's attracted to my brain. Yes. I'm attracted to his physical presence. Okay, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to go personal there. Right, but the point, the point I'm trying to make is this. I'll tell you something But interesting. That's it, that's Can I tell you something interesting? Very interesting. Look, God created us. God knows our nature. If what you're saying was better, which is what fem- feminism is pushing forward, I, we don't believe in 50-50 partnership. We don't believe that's possible even. Because every CEO, CEO is one. Every country president is one. Even every board needs to have an odd number. So you have three against two, for example, when they vote on something. You cannot have two people driving one car. If he's going left and you're going right and it's 50-50, the car is going to crash, right? So, in reality... I have to say, you're very intelligent. No, it's not. It's very articulate. No, I don't think it's about that, but I think it is... a. Ch- Me a lot of a lot of thought. Yeah. I can't say I naturally. So I'll leave you. I'll leave you with this thing okay. because you need to go. I'll leave you with this thing. Look, look at reality. If what you're saying, which sounds nice on paper, 50-50, does it work in reality? No. It does. Can I tell you why not? No, no, not with your relationship. I'm talking on a, on a societal level, right? Do you know that the divorce rate in America? No. Over 50%. percent. Do you know that 80% percent of these divorces are initiated by women? And 90% of those women are university educated. They are initiating the divorce because they lost attraction to the man that they are quote unquote equal with them or lesser than them because women have something called hypergamy. Hypergamy, this, this is all scientific. Hypergamy is that women are attracted to a man that has higher qualities than them in certain aspects. He's taller than them. 
clearly, right? So they attract it to people who are taller than them. They attract it to people who are smarter than them in certain ways, They're stronger than them physically, right? This is the no, nature. This is only a statistic. It's studies. It's it studies. Well, yeah, yeah, but science doesn't explain anything. Like, it doesn't have the hegemony of the world. It's like, okay, but listen. Like, listen. Them, uh, I was yes. previously married yes. to a very controlling, domestically abusive husband. But that's not what I'm saying. You see, you went to extreme. You went from something. Yeah, you went. You went. You went to the extreme a bit. You went from something which I'm not. I'm saying stay in the middle. I'm not saying be in this extreme, be aggressive, this but, and that. And I'm not saying be. Is, is a good thing for people in that situation. I don't agree. Do you know what 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 we get from divorce? We get single parent homes. Do you know that most of the criminals in society are from single parent homes? Read a book on that. It's written by Warren Farrell. Not, so, okay, so I was married to a man who controlled me, who controlled my children. I'm not saying don't get divorced. I'm saying divorce is not a good thing. I met the best man that this world created okay. <laughs> has given my children more yes. stability than I could wish for anybody in the world who is the best person that you could ever find. I'm happy and for you. For somebody to tell me <laughs> yes. that divorce is not a good thing, I no, no, never agree no. It. Divorce can be a good thing for you subjectively. For me. I'm, to I'm not, this is not personal. I'm making it on a societal level. I'm using the concepts that you're quoting and I'm looking at them from a society. Case study is society. Sorry? Case study is society. And we both I'm talking about the divorce rate in society. Even here in the UK, it's over 35% according to the last census. But maybe this is that's a good thing. Maybe it's not a negative. Do you know that according to studies, women are more depressed than ever? They take more antidepressants than ever. Since feminism, since feminism, look, it's not a good thing because suicide rates have have gone through the roof. If it was a good thing you will find the west as the, happy, the happiest people in the west you would not find depressed people in the west you will not find broken families you're not going to find crime rate increasing every day right the reality is i'm talking to you on a societal perspective god sees everything he doesn't look at just me the problem with the west today is that people think about themselves only they don't look at the society like for example drinking they think about themselves but how does drinking affect the society according to the metropolitan police 60 to 70 percent of the knife crime happen on friday and saturday night drunk driving domestic abuse in the house what you were talking about on an individual rather than a society no no because i can have an alcoholic drink and i will always compose myself no no but, but what you're missing here is, is the point i'm making is that god gives commands not specifically for you or me god gives commands for everyone wouldn't you agree god has to give a harmony to the society not just an individual but even on an individual level alcohol is not good for you medically no i agree with that so yeah so god when he prohibits something he prohibits it for our benefit right so when i say to you this idea of relationship if you see for example divorce rate in egypt is 10 percent so one of every 10 people compare it to here over 35 percent in america over 50 percent very happy according to Pew research institute the most hap the happiest people are the religious people so the the the, fa the, the religious the sorry the marriages that last the most according to research are the religious families and the children that are more balanced in the society are religious children because they're taught values for their young their parents are together they get the love from the mother and they get the discipline from the father but when you have single parent homes like Warren Farrell as I said to you he has a book on this idea how most criminals you can say 90 percent coming are, sing are coming from single parent homes so this divorce can be good in certain situations for some individuals we're not saying don't divorce like Christianity says a woman cannot get divorced separate from the man that's not Islam that's not Islam Islam allows men and women to separate but we I'm saying on a societal level a law of divorce is not a good thing because there are children involved and they're always affected by how parents are separated when they're not with one another right so Islam is trying to give you that holistic community. I really appreciate this no problem another point of view. no problem no problem get, give it to you give it to you no problem I'm happy I'm happy to talk to you guys no problem my pleasure thank you guys no problem you too thank you anyway it yes. was amazing to be into no problem you as well and, and I, I'm and sorry because I was like really two conversations here no, it, it was <laughs> It's, it's okay. It's, give it a read. And by the way, look, we're here. Anytime you have any questions, you want, you need anything, just come back. I'm happy to answer.